Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Sanders Kitchen. I'm Mike. Let me ask you a question. How would you like to be able to bake some homemade Sicilian style fig cookies? Or some people call them Italian fig cookies. It doesn't matter. The point is, is how would you like to be able to know how to do this? These things cost upwards to about $2 a piece. I've seen them. It depends on the size. But boy, they are so good and they are so delicious. I can't, I, I just can't talk enough about them. So stick around and I'm going to show you all the techniques of making Sicilian fig cookies. And by the way, this is Frank Davis's mother-in-law's recipe. And I'm telling you, she nailed it. Now I am going to, please don't hit me over the head, but I am going to tweak it a little bit and I'll tell you why as I go. But Stick around, we're gonna make some great fig cookies. Mmm, mmm. So let's go ahead and show you guys what all is in the ingredients for the, the filling of the fig cookies. I downloaded the recipe that Frank wrote, and uh, remember it's his mother-in-law's recipe. Now, and I said that I was gonna tweak it just a little bit, and I'm gonna tell you why. Some figs have the seeds or the pits in them and you need to remove them unless you buy them pitted. Um, I happen to have bought pitted uh, dates and, um, and I'm gonna have to remove them. They were 14 ounces total. You know, by the time you take the pits out, you might have 12 ounces. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw or put the other ones back in the, in the pantry. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use them all, okay? Instead of eight ounces, I'll probably use 12 or 13 ounces, whatever. Okay, um, the next thing that I'm going to do that's a little bit different is I'm going to add two ounces of uh, anise. This is anise extract, um, A-N-I-S-E. If you've never heard of it, let me tell you, it makes a huge difference in how the filling tastes because we made it and then we added the anise and mixed it up again and it was a huge difference and we like it, okay? If you don't like the anise flavor, then please don't use it, okay? However, um, the only other change, and it's not really an ingredient change, it's when you're grinding, this stuff is so sticky, the, the uh, raisins and the dates and the figs and all that, it's just so sticky that it's hard to get everything through the grinder so, I'm going to spray a little oil before I start, and that's, that's all I'm gonna do. That's all the changes I'm gonna make, and everything else is the same. I don't think that if you change the recipe, like a tweak it a little bit more, a couple of ounces here or there, it's gonna make that big of a difference. But anyway, let's go ahead and just show you all of what's in the recipe. So we're gonna start off with dates, and then we have raisins. I use the golden raisins, and the, the traditional style raisins. And then we have, now Frank, his mother-in-law calls out for uh, walnuts and pecans. I didn't have any walnuts. In fact, I did, but they were, they were too old. So we're just using pecans. Um, now we have the, the dried mission figs. Now the Italian style figs come in a little round container they're really dry, and according to my mother, who's been making these things for many, many years, she's 96 years old and she's not making them anymore, but she likes to use those Italian figs, but they are really hard and they're dry and she likes to soak them. Well, you know what? I find that these figs are, are very uh, soft. They are dried, but they're soft, so we decided that we were gonna use these figs this time. All right. And now um, you're gonna need to weigh out a pound and a half of brown sugar. And let's go ahead and skirt right on over here to uh, ground cinnamon, uh, ground clove. All of the amounts will be in the description again. We have ground nutmeg. Um, and we have one whole jigger, I think that's a jigger, of whiskey. It's just some bourbon. That's what the recipe calls out for. And the only other thing I would like to recommend that you do is that you use a scale. Get yourself a nice little digital scale. They don't cost that much money. 
Uh, and when I say that, I'm talking maybe $10, $12, $15 at the most. We bought this one at Taylor. They don't sponsor me. I'm just telling you, we've had this one for a long time, and I, I, it works great. Absolutely works great. So get yourself a little digital scale. Now, the only other thing that we will be using is a, a, a motorized grinder, okay? And... Uh, and that's because, you know, you can sit there and grind all this stuff by hand, but it takes forever. And so we've had this for a while. And they, it calls out for using the, uh, the, the fine disc, you know, the smallest holes. So that's, what, that's the one we're going to use. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started. There's a couple of things we need to do before we can get to grinding. So let me go ahead and show you what that is. I found some figs that had the stems on them. So I'm taking the rest of the stems off. All you do is just, you know, pop them off. You can use a pair of scissors if you like. Throw the stems away and I'm done with that. The dates have these pits in them. So you squeeze it until the pit just comes out like that. Really simple, really simple. Just squeeze the pit, the pit out. There it is right there little bitty pit like that big and so now I have this big container right here because the next thing I'm going to do is pour all of the ingredients into one container the figs the dates yep just making sure I took the pit out of that rascal okay Here's all the raisins. Get them all in there. And uh, we'll put the, put the pecans in next. I have them all weighed out. Everything's weighed out, okay? Um, at this point, I think I'll go ahead and throw in the spices. Nutmeg, clove, cinnamon. brown sugar next see all of this needs to get mixed together and so I just decided that I wanted to to try to mix it like this with a big spoon I, I don't think it's absolutely necessary but I wanted to kind of get them mixed and the reason why is because I want to have them all mixed when they go into the grinder, okay? So just a little bit of mixing. It's pretty sticky stuff. And then two ounces of anise, the whole bottle. Wow. And then the bourbon. Mm. Boy, you ought to smell this. It's smelling some good. And I need a knife because we need to cut a lemon in half. And we'll, it says the juice of a, the recipe calls out for a uh, uh, juice of a half a lemon. Okay, and I think that was the juice of a half a lemon right there. And now the recipe calls out for one whole orange, peel and all. So what I'm gonna do is just cut the, the very top off and the bottom just to get that little hard stem off. And, um, and now this ought to go in the, in the grinder pretty easy like that. So, um, so I'm not even gonna squeeze it in here. I could, but I don't need to. Okay, so everything is ready for the grinder. Okay, as I said, this is not rocket science. This part of the video is just grinding everything up. But what I'm gonna do is give it a little squirt of oil like that, because I want everything to go through easy. So I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to play some music for you so you don't have to hear all this grinding. Wow. 
look how beautiful this is. So I'm going to mix it a little bit. It's very sticky, but there's some orange juice and the peel that got grinded up, and I just want to mix it up a little bit. Man, this looks so good. It's amazing. Look how beautiful that is. That is your fig filling for your Italian fig cookies. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's amazing. It's really, really good. What a combination. So that really concludes step one of Italian fig cookies. The next two steps that are coming behind this will be making the cookie dough, how to weigh it out, how to roll it out, how to put the fig preserves, I mean the, <laughs> the fig filling and, uh, and make the cookies and bake them and, uh, that, and then of course baking them and coating them and that's all the, that's going to be like step three. So we're going to have three steps to this whole process and hopefully you'll be able to watch all three because this is one heck of a great recipe. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in again to the Sanders Kitchen. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Uh, hit that notification bell. That way you do know when we come out with our videos and you'll be first to know. So thanks again. And uh, I hope you guys are uh, having a great weekend wherever you are. By the way, that's a good, a, a good question. Where are you watching from? I'd, I'd sure would like to know. Let me know what country you're watching from. I want to be able to tell you hello. So leave, leave that in the comments below. So anyway, have a great week. And as I always say, God bless you.